Uh, we can transition to the discussion too. Uh, I just want to answer my, uh, Adam's question on covariance. So, yeah. um, in the same way they were calculating the annual expected returns of percent positive ratios of volatility, we're also calculating the covariance with U.S. equity beta in the regimes. And so, taking the same time, the time periods uh, of those uh, of each, you know, of each exposure that we back to, we back test literally everything that, that ticks. And so, yep. for example, um, you're looking at you know bonds. This is the Bloomberg Barclays 25 year the total return index. You know, the further, you, as I said earlier, the further you get into inflation deflation, that co inverse covariance picks up um, with you with uh, you, the S&P 500. So, so it's um, beta that, to spoo's essentially. Yeah, exactly. And so when you see that ranking on the on this these 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 scatter plots, we're taking that 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 you know this table here, where it's just some we're we're trying to blend it all together to you know there's a proprietary process that I'm not saying is perfect, but I think it's it's pretty good in terms of blending all these back tests together, and then we just rank them. And so the, the ranking allows us to, 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 to calculate a mean value for them. And the mean value allows us to plot them on the scatter plot. And so we got a mean value for covariance volatility on the X axis and a mean value for the expected return of percent positive ratio on the Y axis. Yeah, I'm right. loving it. So help, help me understand how you translate that scatter plot to a portfolio. Mm -hmm. You don't need to actually show me the portfolio. I know that's yeah. proprietary, but I'm just keen to know how that how that works at your end. Yeah. So going back to the pie chart allocation, so the pie, the pie, the size of the slices of the pie correspond to the percentage, the, the, the probability of realizing the regime over the next three to six months, mostly the next three months. And so uh, if let's say I need, you know, just to fill up, you know, 50 percent of the portfolio with, with deflation exposures, for example, I'm going to go to the deflation back test and those scatter plots and go pick dots from the top left of the, the, the scatter plot. You know, the top left. So which dots do you pick and then how do you size them? Yeah, for example. Uh, so for now, I mean, I've, I've, I've experimented and failed with uh, with mean variance in terms of sizing. So we right now we're just uh, uh, sizing them up equal weight, equal weights. But so, for example, in fixed income, you know, if I'm, you know, we're trying to let's say we need to add fixed income dots in the uh, in the pie chart. Well, let's go find things in fixed income that have a high, you know, reward score and a low risk score. So that's be short term, you know, short term treasury tips, MBS, you know, kind of a treasury belly or that, that's seven to 10 year. This is ag, TLT, ADV. It's kind of the usual suspect, exactly what you would expect. It's obviously not things like, you know, BDCs, high yield, co uh, convertible bonds, bank loans, emerging market debt, EM local currency. So this the scatter plots help me fill out that, you know, that that slice of the pie. And so if I'm using QA exposures and I need to get, you know, to 50, for example, you know, that's going to be, you know, a little bit more. That's going to be 12, you know, 12 different slices or 12 different, you know, dots. So I obviously got to run out of dots in this particular back test. So I got to go find them from other, from other, from other asset classes that kind of mimic that exposure. Fixed income would be the closest one in terms of volatility. Okay, and all these so, recommendations are non-levered. Yeah, no, I, just, <laughs> this, that's. I don't believe in leverage, man. That's how you blow yourself up. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Well, we're gonna. We have how much time? Strike do we that. Have left? We have. Okay. We have what, thirty-five what, what, minutes left to <laughs> yeah. talk about that. What I, what I, yeah. So, so I, I'm. I think I'm understanding. I mean, it's it's interesting to me that like EDV with a duration of like thirty is equally weighted in there with shy with a duration of like two, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then so I guess at the there's at least two steps to this there's the asset class allocation which is informed by the regime probabilities yeah. right and then so that you've got that sort of pie weighting and then within each of those asset classes you've got a list of um a list of exposures that are expected to perform well in that regime and you just sort of take some mix of those exposures and kind of equal weight them is, is yeah. kind of the general portfolio construction concept that is that is correct yep and, and well it's it's not it there there there's one more layer this there's, there's the slice of the pie that corresponds to the what we expect to realize in the economy because what we what we what we expect to realize in the economy we believe we infer that the asset markets are going to try to price that in in the market regime sense and so the slice of the pie corresponds to that part of the process what actually what asset classes I'm using to fill up the slice of the pie corresponds to the back test. OK, so in inflation and deflation, I know I need more fixed income exposures because they have a higher expected value than equity and commodity exposures. However, right. if I'm in inflation or Goldilocks, that's the opposite is true. I want less bonds and more more risk assets. And so that that's that part of the process that's kind of not not depicted here, but it's sort of automatically inferred. 